Hello everyone, welcome back to Colorado Kid. We're taking on Gremio today in the big old derby game. It's a really, really important one to the uh, supporters of both Inter and Gremio. These two teams, long established rivals and uh, neither of them wants to walk away with the big L today. Looking at the Gremio team, there's some names in there. There are some big names in there. Tardelli. I don't think that's the Allison that plays in goal. <laughs> um, I, I am aware of Gabriel, a Gabriel that plays for uh, Gremio. I'm not sure if it's the same one. Let's have a quick look. Let's have a quick look. It's not the Gabriel that I'm thinking of, fortunately. But they have some experienced heads, some decent players. They've got a good centre forward. Uh, I don't think he's anywhere near the same quality as Guerrero for us, but uh, we're going to go with uh, this team today, just to show you. Uh, Ed and Nilsson coming in for Velasco, who's not feeling at his best. Velasco will sit on the bench for us just in case we need him. Uh, Wellington did indeed come and play a game for us last time out against Santos, and uh, he uh, he contributed. He didn't score, but he did contribute with an assist. And uh, I have to tell you guys, I am absolutely loving playing with this team. The Brazilian League, if you get the chance to play in the Brazilian League, it is just so much fun. Like There are balls going loose all over the place. Uh, it's absolute madness. Uh, you can pull off some insane finishes as well. Uh, we've already seen Guerrero notch up four, five goals in the space of three matches, uh, one of which was off camera, of course. But uh, we're gonna go with the uh, pretty much the the same lineup that we've seen play for us before, uh, with the exception, of course, of Velasco missing out because of his form not being too great. So Ed Nielsen coming in for him. Keeping my fingers crossed, there's been a lot made about this derby game. I've had three different cutscenes telling me that the derby's important. Make sure you rotate players, keep everyone fit for this. It's obviously a game that uh, the uh, the Inter supporters do not want to lose, and it's also a game that the uh, management, the upper management of the team, don't want to lose either. I do like the way that Gremio have three separate coloured stars at the top of their crest. They have a, a bronze, silver and a gold. I wonder what they sim uh, sim uh, what they're symbolic of. So it seems the ticker tape is a, uh, a, a daily occurrence when you're playing at uh, the Rio Stadium. It's a good hustle from the Inter players. Somehow managing to win the throw in. Don't know how they managed that, honestly. But I'm not going to complain. Rough tackle on the edge of the area. Referee gives nothing. He's not in a charitable ball mood today, it seems. That's a little bit heavy. Ah, oh, he can't keep it in. I thought he was going to try the first time cross. But he didn't. Goes out for a goal kick to Gremio. Pretty fraught opening six minutes. Cross a little bit wanting. They just about failed to keep the ball in. I thought for a second he was just about going to manage to keep it in. But uh, no luck in the end for the Gremio players. Ah, I thought we might win that, but we didn't quite manage it. Now that player using his strength, and that's his strength, his strength. That's well won, though, by Schurz, who scored an absolute peach of a free kick for us in the last outing against Santos. really does have that derby feel. Everyone's snapping at everyone else's heels. There's a chance here, and the goalkeeper makes a very good save. And that's well won cleanly by the defender. 
Oh, the ball's bouncing all over the bloody place here. I'm loving it. Oh, nice little tricky flick there. Came to nothing. Going to have to get on top of defending against this outfit. So far they're showing some inventive moves. Nice little passes, tricks and flicks as I said. How's he beaten three people there? <laughs> That's ridiculous. And that was a very, very risky pass. It wasn't what I had intended at all. But we get away with it, so it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Got an overload here. Oh, hello. Goalkeeper spilt it for a second. I wonder we might be able to get onto it. Couldn't quite, unfortunately, but that gives me hope. We might be able to in future. Lobbed into the box. Dealt with. Cross in. Headed out by Gremio. It's going to be a corner. Good play. Whipped in. Comes out to the edge of the area. Shaped shoot. Oh, no, couldn't quite manage it. Shaped the shot, but it caught a couple of deflections on the way through, and what pace it did have was quickly taken back off. That's well won high up the pitch. Ah, no, can't quite manage his momentum. Runs straight into a Gremio defender, and the ball is won, and they have possession back. This feels like an away day, honestly. Getting absolutely no time on the ball whatsoever. Of course, at Newcastle, we didn't have the opportunity to play any uh, derby games as such. Sunderland not in the game because they're absolutely fucking shithouse at the moment. That's a nice overlap. Here's a chance. And it's well dealt with by the defence. That wasn't. Took the shot. Probably should have looked for a pass. And that lovely continental goal kick. The, uh, the side swipe. Uh-oh. This could be trouble. Well done, goalkeeper. I'll tell you what. A good goalkeeper in this league is absolutely worth his weight in gold. And this keeper has clawed us out of a fair few scrapes in the last couple of matches. Headed out as far as a Gremio player on the edge of the box. He's going to look to take a shot here, I think. No, he plays it in instead. And that is half time. It's been a raucous first half here. End to end stuff. The ball has never stood still for more than a second. About as entertaining a nil nil as I've played myself so far. And we'll go straight in for the second half. Get the feeling that Velasco might, despite his form issues, end up coming off the bench for this one. That's a good tackle. Oh, I'm not so sure about that one, though. That was a bit filthy. And he's through on goal, perhaps. Yes. Oh, it's good defending, though. Very, very good defending. Calm, cool, collected. A lunging challenge by the Ford. He gets a yellow, and frankly, I think he could think himself lucky for that. 
because this is about a oh, that's a late challenge scything straight through the ankles of the defender Remio looking to get men forward quickly whenever they get possession deep in their half. Loose ball goes out of play. It's an inter throw. Just a little bit too slow in getting that final pass away every time at the moment, Inter. They need to be quicker on the ball. That's a bit of a coming together there. Gremio fortunate. Ah, oh, the control letting him down badly there. If he'd been able to run off of the ball. Maybe Inter would have had a chance. Inter are winning these headers, though. Good interplay in the midfield by Gremio. These short passes are really doing them a service in maintaining their possession of the ball. Inter are having a hard time sticking with them at the moment. The pace of this game is getting away from them. Again, the control is not right. And it looks like Inter are making a change, as Gremio do as well. And Ed Nilsson is coming off for Velasco. Just didn't offer enough in midfield, Ed Nilsson. So Velasco, despite his form being in the toilet at the moment, gets an opportunity. Oh, what was I didn't even tell him to slide there. I don't know what that was. If he gets a book in for this, I'm going to be furious. I think he gets away with it. I must have auto slide engaged. I'm going to have to turn that off. Remio hovering over the kick. Play it forward. Here's a break here. Guerrero looking to get on it. He manages to beat his man. All he's got to do now is bring the ball into the box. And he just can't do it. Too much for one man to do, seemingly. Wouldn't be surprised if this game ended nil-nil the way it's going at the moment. Oh, no! What a save. Straight at his feet, but he did well to react to it. It's not a spectacular save, but it's a vital one. Oof. That was a bit of a risky one. Is Guerrero on the run again. He's going to put pressure on the centre-back. And he does enough to force him to put it out. Seven minutes left, Inter with an, a throw in the opponent's half. Oh, it's a chance! Ah, oh, and it goes begging. A 
And that falls kindly to Gremio. And in turn, it falls kindly to Inter. And here's a chance for Inter. And it's gone in. It's a goal in the 86th minute for Potka. And William Potka may very well have won this game for Inter at the death. It's been a scrappy game. But what a cool collected finish in the situation he was in. Just rolled it into the bottom left-hand corner. That's why you get paid the big bucks. And now, of course, the question is, can Inter hang on for these last few minutes of what is sure to be intense Gremio pressure? be a chance here he's going to try and turn on the ball if he can goalkeeper clutches it to his chest and that should be that he's going to pump it nice and long yeah, that is indeed it the final whistle goes another trophy for the cabinet derby dominator winging its way to my collection and Inter have beaten Gremio 1-0 they walk away with all three points and some will ask who's going to be happier. The manager, the players. Well, it's going to be the fans, isn't it? Brilliant game, end-to-end -end stuff. Never a dull moment. A reasonable amount of shots. It was very, very even, the game, if you have a look at those stats. Incredibly even, the two teams. Renato Gaucho's men just unable to get the W. And in the end, it was Inter that walked away with the 1-0 victory a little bit of an advantage being at home but of course this reverse fixture will take place at some point and Gremio will feel that they should take the advantage in that fixture Marcelo Lomba quite rightly getting the man of the match he kept his team in it on numerous occasions he pulled out some fantastic reaction saves 7.5 man of the match give that boy a bottle of champagne Here's the rest of the scores, and you can see Cruzeiro losing 1-0 to Atletico Paranan... Oh, my God. I could never say this. Paran Paranense. Atletico Paranense. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I had to sound it out in my head. So uh, that is going to upset the apple cart a little bit. We could well see the lead extended at the top. And indeed we do, as now Inter sit 14 points clear at the top of the table. This is absolutely stunning from Inter. With 15 days left in the transfer window, it's looking likely that we're not going to make any really interesting or important signings as every opportunity to go into the youth team and see whether or not we've got any young centre-backs coming through that we might be able to uh, take advantage of. Let's have a quick look. Where is the uh, negotiations? There we go. I was lost for a second there, people into youth team let's have a look well Benatia and a Serbi are both players that we could just about for the salary budget is now up to 19,710 so we could indeed afford to bring in another defender the question would be do we go for a South American or do we go for a slightly better Moroccan or Italian 
I'm tempted to keep it relatively realistic, and I know we've had many conversations about realism on this game before, especially where it comes to the uh, the the updates and the uh, you know the regens. But I uh, I think Diego Carlos might be the uh, the player to bring in. He's tall. Uh, let's have a look at his ball winning. His ball winning is good. How's his heading? His heading's not terrible. Uh, jumping is decent. Physical contact is good. Uh, what about pace? How is he for pace? Let's have a look. Uh, I can't find his pace stats. Anyone see his pace stats? Here we go. Speed and acceleration. They're very good as well. I think he'd be a pretty decent signing. And we do need another centre-back quite badly. So, Diego Carlos, welcome to the team. We could also do with another centre-forward. And Fred is available, but slightly too expensive salary-wise at the moment. Suarez is also available and just about affordable. Uh, hmm. We might come back to looking at Fred at a later date. We might just wait and see if we have any more offers come in for some players and if we can maybe get shot of one or two. Certainly if we can sell Wellington, I would uh, definitely consider bringing someone in to replace him. But that's going to do it for another episode. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.